Roy's self-awareness, the awareness of myself being aware, uh, is a, a, a very critical capacity that we have as human beings that we all, not necessarily aware of all the time, but when we are aware, it's such a powerful emotion that I, I'm, I'm now aware of myself talking to you. That's a kind of a, a startling feeling. Um, philosophers, theologians, uh, neuroscientists, work on this. You're a social psychologist, you work in the lab, but you also uh, you deal with a lot of the deep theory of social psychology. How can that help us to understand self-awareness? Well, um, first you can ask what is, what is the function, what is the use or the value of, uh, of being self-aware? Uh, as a, a couple of social psychologists argued uh, very persuasively a couple of decades ago, the purpose of being self-aware is so you can regulate yourself, so you can change yourself. The, the reason humans evolved so much more self-awareness than other species, uh, it's not just to make ourselves miserable uh, or torture ourselves with, I shouldn't have done that or whatever, but it's enable you to reflect on your behavior and change it. You mm. can't really change what you're not aware of. Mm. Um, so our, our social lives require a lot of self-control, self-regulation. We live, uh, the success of the human species comes from living in culture, which has many rules. Uh, but they only work if most people follow the rules most of the time. You have to change your behavior uh, to go along with the rules. Uh, and we do modify our behavior to make a good impression on others, to live up to their expectations, to follow moral rules, legal rules, uh, all, all sorts of things. We, we, uh, we do that, but we need self-awareness is crucial uh, to make that possible. Um, it's like taking a picture of ourselves now, of what we are and, and what we may want to be or have to be, and then say, how do I transform one into the other? Well, when social psychologists started studying self-awareness, they said, well, I think that'd be an interesting thing to study, and let's just try it. Let's put mirrors up in front of people and see how they change. Uh, and they found uh, that people uh, started uh, behaving better. Uh, they started changing in a variety of ways, but they also noticed very soon that people aren't just aware of themselves like, oh, I'm aware of that rock lying over there or that painting on the wall. When you're aware of yourself, you're always saying, how am I compared to mm. something else? Mm. So other psychologists started thinking about this and saying, well, why every time you're self-aware, why is there always a compare to how you should be or how you might be or how you wish you were or how somebody else thinks you should be? Maybe that's the purpose is so you can say, here I am. Here's my ideal, or here's the rule, or here's what I'm trying not to be. Uh, how can I increase this difference, distance, lower this difference? How can I become more what I want to be? So our continuous process of changing ourselves to adjust to our social environment so as to get more out of it, have better relationships, uh, have more love, more money, all that, <laughs> uh, that comes because we change ourselves to fit in, and that requires self-awareness. Mm. Uh, yeah. If you're not aware of some aspect of your behavior, it's very hard to control. Uh, people who go into those uh, you know, eating binges, drinking binges and stuff, they cease to keep track of how much they're doing, so they don't really know what they're doing. You know, they might know at the moment they're uh, uh, consuming something, but they, they stop keeping track. Uh, if you want to improve your self-control, the first thing to do is to keep track more carefully. Mm. Um, and so that's a crucial purpose of self-awareness to en enable us to uh, regulate ourselves. What, what type of experiments uh, it, it have shown this uh, in the lab, where you can uh, increase uh, individual self self-control? I mean, how do you how do you eliminate all the extraneous variables that we have in society and and and, and show it in okay. a way that we can we can really study it and come to a scientific conclusion? The, the huge burst of studies of self-awareness, uh, which has kind of come and gone, the problems have been solved, and we, but uh, they had a couple methods. Uh, one was simply to put in cues in the environment to make people self-aware. So they'd put a mirror in front of people, in the control condition, they'd just turn it around backward. And okay. so there you're seeing your image of yourself, and while what you're doing, you, you notice that. Um, having a camera on you uh, makes you self-aware. Having people watch you makes you self-aware. Um, and then what's the what's the the independent the the dependent variable? What are you measuring at that point? You can measure um, do people change their attitudes? Are they consistent uh, with what they believe in? Do they work harder on a simple task? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, do they have more emotions or less emotions? Mm -hmm, you can mm -hmm. measure. Uh, there's a great deal of research uh, using that. Another another method that was used uh, was to look at personality differences. Some people are just chronically much more self-aware than others. Uh, so, psychologists with, you know, it's, a, it's a big job to develop a questionnaire and do all the 
statistics and psychometric properties, but uh, there's some good ones that say you know, these people, and there's actually two kinds of self-awareness. They're somewhat distinct. Uh, one is you think about your own thoughts, uh, you're sort of into yourself and you attend to your emotions and you notice people who are low on that just may not even notice how they feel or, mm -hmm. uh, or whatever. Uh, the other kind is called public self-consciousness, uh, which is attunement to how other people uh, perceive you. Uh, so there it might be, for example, uh, chronic dieters often have low private self-consciousness because they learn to avoid mm. noticing the inner cues when they're hungry, which comes back to bite them because then they also don't notice the inner cues that tell them when they're full. Mm. But they're often highly sensitive to other people. Do those people think I'm fat? Do they think I'm eating too much uh, uh, as well? So you can be high on both, low on both, or high Is on, there a correlation? Uh, there's a there's a small correlation, but they are uh, but they, they work quite independently. Distinct. Yeah, yes. interesting, interesting. Yes, and so how, how do you see them uh, uh, being? If those are the two major components of human self awareness, um, how does that affect uh, the development of, of human species? Well, we evolved to survive and reproduce. I mean, all animals have to survive and reproduce. Our strategy is to belong to these groups. So the first thing you have to do is get some groups to accept you and not kick you out. People care about social approval, about whether others like them. Um, I'm, I'm just actually looking into, is there, are there any traces of this in, in other species? But we care much more about what other people's opinions are. And I think that goes with trying to become accepted in, into a group. So self-awareness is important for that, uh, especially public self-awareness. Why don't they like me? How can I change to be more of the sort of person uh, that others will want to have join their group and hire me and marry me and all those other, uh, all those other things. So uh, being better at that uh, probably was a huge advantage, and that's why we're descended from the ancestors who kept having a little bit more of that than the certainly. Than the certainly, the the public self awareness that makes sense for uh, mm -hmm. for increased um, uh, reproductive success in society. But how about the private one? Private one, I don't know what the evolutionary argument is, uh, but uh, um, being aware of your own inner states is uh, uh, presumably confers some advantages. Advantages, I, I guess. I don't really uh, have a good handle on that right now. I, uh, I haven't looked uh, what what's been found there. Yeah, it's not necessarily the case that everything has to have an evolutionary direct <clears throat> could, yeah. relationship. There one could, could be could a side, be a, effect, of a side effect of the other, right. or sometimes a, malada a maladaption can uh, attach itself to an adaption and get dragged yeah. along, and yeah. you, you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you, you don't know that. Yes. So that's why it's an interesting, so, the internal self-awareness is interesting. But there might be some advantages to, to doing that. Right, uh, right, 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 right. So taking a step back and looking at self-awareness and, and the overall big picture, um, we know that this is a major characteristic of human beings and it, if, if it is at all existent in the animal kingdom, it's extremely small. You put a mirror in front of a dolphin or something, maybe it notices a spot. But um, but uh, how how what, what's the big overview of the importance of, of self awareness for human beings? Well, it uh, it's hard to imagine a, a human culture functioning very successfully uh, without self awareness. Uh, that people have to know their their place in the world. Uh, they have to. I mean, they don't have to have an identity crisis and and, and, and do all that sort of stuff. But they have to know what they're capable of and how they can fit in uh, to the group. Uh, and they have to adjust their behavior accordingly. So you have to be aware of what you're doing in order to adjust it. Uh, so I see it as one of the ingredients, the psychological prerequisites to make uh, culture successful. Uh, and maybe you could have the beginnings of culture without it, uh, but uh, it would be a, a huge advantage to have self-awareness and much more flexible and, and, and effective culture, uh, which would ultimately make everyone live longer and better.